four decades, eyewitnesses have reported UFOs crashing to Earth. Some believe crashed UFOs may contain alien technology that could change the course of history. But someone is bent on keeping knowledge of these incidents from the public. Top secret government retrieval teams are removing downed UFOs with lightning speed and threatening anyone who attempts to catch a glimpse of them. Witnesses often claim that the men in black show up in black unmarked vehicles. They also have been known to be in black unmarked helicopters. Who are these men and who commands them? Why are they determined to keep alien secrets from the public? Could knowledge of crashed UFOs determine the fate of the human race? Join us as we investigate secret UFO crash retrieval units on Unsealed Alien Files. A global effort has begun. Secret files hidden from the public for decades, detailing every UFO account, are now available to the public. We are about to uncover the truth behind these classified documents. Find out what the government doesn't want you to know. Unsealed Alien Files. Exposing the biggest secret on planet Earth. Needles, California. March 2008. Multiple witnesses see a bright blue object streak across the night sky and crash to Earth in the largely uninhabited desert region along the Colorado River. It disappears beyond a ridge where it presumably impacts, but no sound is heard. The onlookers include Frank Costigan, a former security chief of the Los Angeles International Airport who watches as a response team approaches the impact site. Costigan has worked in conjunction with any number of law enforcement and national security agencies. But this is unlike anything he's ever seen before. Instead of the expected search and rescue or air ambulance units, he watches as a small formation of unmarked black helicopters gathers over the crash zone. They leave carrying a large glowing object suspended by a cargo hook. The former LAX security chief contacts David Hayes, the owner of Needle's local radio station, to report the news. But Hayes has news of his own. In the minutes following the crash, he allegedly watched as a convoy of dark vehicles bearing government license plates raced toward the scene. It's clear to both men that both the helicopters and convoy were working together and that this was not their first operation. Witnesses often claim that the men in black show up in black unmarked vehicles. They also have been known to be in black unmarked helicopters. Whether you're an abductee or just a UFO witness, it's very possible that you're going to see one of these black helicopters. But when the Needles incident witnesses report what they've seen, authorities deny any knowledge of a crashed UFO or any government response units in the area. The case is considered closed. According to experts, the Needles incident is a textbook UFO retrieval operation carried out with ruthless efficiency. But who are these specialists? And do they really work for the government? If so, the Needles operation shows they have come a long way from one of the first alleged attempts at UFO retrieval. Roswell, New Mexico, 1947. A UFO crashes in the desert. Multiple witnesses report American troops engaged in a large-scale operation to retrieve the wreckage. The military announces its recovery to the world, only to retract the statement the next day. The botched handling of the Roswell incident will give rise to a worldwide community of UFO conspiracy theorists that continues to this day. But how could UFO retrieval evolve from Roswell to surgical operations like that at Needles? The answer may lie hidden in the pages of a legendary military manual. Unsealed case file. Special Operations Manual 1-01. 1954. In the years following Roswell, America is experiencing a UFO craze. But the Air Force doesn't share the public's enthusiasm. It reportedly issues Special Operations Manual 1-01 providing detailed instructions for the recovery and disposal of UFOs. The procedures spelled out in the manual bear an uncanny resemblance to those carried out in the Needles operation, demanding that extreme measures be taken to protect and preserve any material or craft from discovery. 
by any and all means deemed necessary. Why is the military prepared to go to deadly extremes to keep crashed UFOs from the public eye? What are they trying to hide? Coming up, we investigate the mysterious organization that reportedly controls America's UFO retrieval operations and reveal their alleged involvement in the crime of the century. This is Unsealed Alien Files, exposing the biggest secret on planet Earth. Welcome back to Unsealed Alien Files. For decades, witnesses have reported secret government response teams speeding to recover crashed UFOs. Their mission? To keep onlookers away and deliver the wreckage to high security facilities away from the public eye. The government denies their existence, but the public record tells a very different story. Kecksburg, Pennsylvania, December 9, 1965. Residents report a fiery object streaking across the evening sky. At first glance, it looks like a meteor, until it suddenly appears to adjust its trajectory moments before crashing in a forest outside town. Many rush to the impact site, but few get close enough to see the mysterious aftermath. When they gathered, what they noticed was that almost instantly a group, a unit of American soldiers who wore no insignia and came with a flatbed truck were there to retrieve this object and take it away. People were warned, keep your mouth shut. Don't talk about this. 24 hours after the Kecksburg crash, the media take up the official government position, no UFO crash near Kecksburg, and the military was never there. Was Kecksburg the work of the same mysterious organization that appeared in Needles, California over 40 years later? If it was, who are they? And who do they work for? The answers may lie in the early years of the Cold War. Unsealed case file. The Air Intelligence Squadron. 1952. The Air Intelligence Squadron is formed. Its ranks include seasoned veterans of the Second World War and Korea, specially trained for the recovery of downed Soviet spy planes and the thorough examination of the technology. But in 1953, only a year after its formation, the squadron receives an historic order. Air Defense Command issues Regulation 200-2, expressing the military's direct interest in the facts pertaining to UFOs. Air Intelligence is to provide a highly mobile response unit ready to recover downed objects of unknown origin. It's a rare admission by the American military of the existence of UFOs. A 1955 map allegedly reveals air intelligence agents stationed across the nation, casting the widest possible net in their mission to recover crashed alien craft. But what happens to the wreckage? Where is it taken? And who is in charge of its safekeeping? Many experts believe America's UFOs are controlled by the Majestic 12, an ultra-secret committee of high-ranking science and intelligence officers, assembled by President Truman in the days following the Roswell incident. They also believe that the organization quickly went rogue, defying the authority of even the president himself. President Kennedy was very concerned over the power of this organization called Majestic 12, the decisions were not being made in the best interests of the United States and were not being made by the best minds that the U.S. could offer. It's alleged that behind closed doors, Kennedy demanded full disclosure of the Majestic 12's UFO activities. Some believe this challenge to their authority cost him his life. Was America's secret UFO organization behind the Kennedy assassination? What secrets were they trying to hide? The answer may be found in one of the most dangerous UFO retrieval operations ever reported. Unsealed case file. The Fort Dix alien. Fort Dix, New Jersey, January 18th, 1978. An eyewitness using the name Jeffrey Morse reports a dozen glowing UFOs hovering over the base. A state trooper responds to the call. But just as he arrives at the gate, his headlights reveal a short, gray-skinned alien. Startled, 
the officer fires six shots at the creature, and then another at a UFO that appears above. The alien flees into the darkness. A short time later, Morse finds the alien dead on an unused runway between Fort Dix and nearby Fort McGuire. Both bases are immediately placed in security lockdown. An unidentified unit arrives and informs the base commander it is taking control of the situation. The unit allegedly retrieves the alien and transports it to Wright-Patterson Air Force Base in Ohio, home to the infamous Hangar 18, which many believe to be a storage facility for debris recovered at Roswell and other UFO crash sites. Morse is ordered to Wright-Patterson, where he is threatened with court-martial if he ever speaks out about the incident. Did the crash retrieval team dispatched to Fort Dix really recover an alien body? And if they did, why are they keeping this landmark discovery from the public? Could they be protecting us from imminent danger? Coming up, we investigate the risk of direct contact with UFOs and reveal what may be the key to the crash retrieval mystery. This is Unsealed Alien Files, exposing the biggest secret on planet Earth. Welcome back to Unsealed Alien Files. Many experts believe that a secret government organization has seized control of America's UFO crash retrieval operations. Are they working in their own self-interest, or are they protecting the public from an alien threat so extreme it would cause mass panic? Dayton, Texas, December 29th, 1980. Betty Cash and Vicki Landrum are driving along a rural highway in the dead of night when a bright, diamond-shaped object appears above their car. They stop and get out to take a better look, only to be struck by a wall of blazing heat emanating from the object. Moments later, nearly two dozen unmarked helicopters arrive on the scene, but the UFO disappears into the night. The helicopters follow, paying no attention to the victims below. Over the next few days, Cash and Landrum begin to feel ill. They show signs of severe burns, and begin to experience hair loss. Doctors suspect they were exposed to some form of ionizing radiation. The incident raises a number of disturbing questions. Were the women the victims of a targeted UFO attack? Who was in the helicopters? And why did they ignore them in favor of chasing the alien craft? Many experts believe these UFO response teams are part of a decades-old secret government program to obtain alien technology for research and development by the military. But others believe they serve an entirely different purpose, and without them, humanity might face imminent destruction. Unsealed Case File The Extraterrestrial Exposure Law Kecksburg Witnesses report men in white protective suits leaving the impact site with the crashed UFO. Clark McClellan, a former science officer with NASA, has claimed the agency was directly involved with the 1965 incident. Four years later, in 1969, the U.S. government passes the Extraterrestrial Exposure Law, making it illegal for any citizen to touch or be in the proximity of any personnel, spacecraft, and other property that has entered our atmosphere from outer space. Presented as a national security measure to prevent possible contamination, the law grants sweeping authority to force any violators into immediate quarantine. Do UFOs really pose a significant health risk to the public? Or is some other agenda at work? Fort Indian Town, Pennsylvania, 1969. Sergeant Clifford Stone is a member of the Army's nuclear, biological, and chemical weapons crisis response team called in to assist in the investigation of what command is calling a downed Soviet aircraft. Approaching the strange pill-shaped aircraft, Stone's Geiger counter crackles to life with abnormally high radiation readings. An open door reveals a torso. But to Stone's amazement, it isn't human. It's an extraterrestrial. Moments later, Stone is ordered off the crash site, while another unidentified response team takes over. The incident will inspire Stone to begin a lifelong campaign to penetrate the government's veil of secrecy. His findings may change the way we think about the U.S. government forever. 
coming up, the final shocking revelation behind the government's UFO retrieval program. This is Unsealed Alien Files, exposing the biggest secret on planet Earth. Welcome back to Unsealed Alien Files. The time to act is now. Tell us your story. Get involved in the fight to unseal the truth now. For decades, the U.S. government has been conducting secret UFO crash retrievals. The extraterrestrial exposure law of 1969 prevented any citizen from examining recovered craft, citing the danger of alien contamination. But according to UFO investigators, like former U.S. Army Sergeant Clifford Stone, preventing radiation sickness or the outbreak of disease is just another government ruse. Its real objective is to maintain complete control over any alien survivors, all in an effort to prevent first contact with the general public. And according to Stone, this has put the world in grave danger from the outside and within. At the NASA Department of Astrobiology conference in 2000, a report was released stating, NASA didn't really know what the world reaction would be to full disclosure. If something went wrong, it could be fatal. Not because extraterrestrials are dangerous, but because we're a danger to ourselves. Retired Air Force Captain Robert Salas is personally aware of that danger. At the 2013 citizen hearing on disclosure, Salas testified about an event that occurred at the Mons from Air Force Base in 1969. He and many other military personnel witnessed a UFO remotely disable 10 nuclear missiles. The craft hovered over the base for several minutes before disappearing and then re-enable the weapons. Salas believes it was a warning and also believes the government and military have a secret agenda in covering up the existence of extraterrestrials. And it's not for the common good. There is a small group of individuals inside government and outside government that are controlling this phenomenon. For Salas, it comes down to one basic truth. It is not about concern for public safety. That window passed a long time ago. This is such a complex thing that uh, these secrets are so powerful that uh, the men controlling this, men and women that are controlling this, uh, I do think it's about power and greed. This is Unsealed Alien Files, exposing the biggest secret on planet Earth.